Hey there, and welcome to the Dynamics Hot Dish Podcast, serving up stories and knowledge on Dynamics 365 and the Power Platform. This is what's hot in Dynamics. You're now joining Merlin Schweiger, Liz McGlennon, and Ashley Steiner. So Merlin, why didn't you tell us about your birthday? That was a month Um, ago. Because I didn't want to talk about it. Why didn't you want to talk about it? Because now I'm old and yes, now I'm old, Ashley. (laughs) And I, there is something about turning a particular milestone age that is a bit sobering perhaps. But I still feel like as people who are in your lives consistently, you should have known. And that's a little hurtful, Merlin. I mean, I guess so. Although I could turn that back around and say, if you're so present in my life, why didn't you already know when my birthday was, Ashley? Because <laughs> you don't like to talk about it, Merlin. Yeah, it's true. Because I turned 40, <laughs> Ashley, and I'm old now. How's it feel to be over the hill? I mean, uh, you know, on the one hand, obviously it feels exactly the same as it felt to be 39. And on the other hand, it feels monumentally worse for some reason. I don't know. It's like, I don't even know. It's, It's all psychological. It's purely psychological. Nothing to worry about when you get there someday. I didn't handle 30 well, so I don't think I'm going to handle 40 well. Oh, then you're not going to like 40 at all. Ashley, do you know what I think we should do? Is plan our 40th birthday parties together. We should. (laughs) That'd be awesome. Wait, when's your birthday, Ashley? In April. Okay. Mine's February, so we could have a joint party in March. Sounds great. Spring break. (laughs) I never do spring break, so that would be the perfect time to do it. And we'll be able to travel before then. (laughs) Hopefully. (laughs) We've got a few years. We've got a few more years than we do. (laughs) Just make sure it's somewhere that's uh, wheelchair accessible in case I need wheels to to come to the party. We'll we'll make sure you can push your walker. (laughs) Then we'll be making fun of you for pushing 50. (laughs) (laughs) Don't we have something else to talk about today? We do. We're going to talk about the, the LinkedIn integration with D365. That'll be way more exciting. Yes. Yeah. Instead of talking about how old you are. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you a little bit of a break, Marilyn. Now. So I, it's been a few years, probably like a year and a half or two, that I've actually set it up and worked with it with, you know, real life with a customer. But I know, Ashley, you've been recently working on it at your organization. Do you want to start by like sharing how that's going or where you're at in that process? Yeah, I feel like I could talk about this for days um, because of like my recent experience and then just also things that I've learned um, just in the last couple months, like working with LinkedIn. Um, The integration has like, I just remember back in the day, like when you were um, like in you know, online still. Um, But like the integration was so limited, like you couldn't do a lot with it. Um, It kind of just showcased somebody's profile. Um, But the integration is so much more now, like you can create content, um, like actual contacts and things like that from LinkedIn into Dynamics. Um, The setup of that, um, I feel like it was so much easier than I made it out to be. I remember getting to this one point um, and like I kept telling LinkedIn, like, it's not going to work. It doesn't work. Like, I can't get it to work. And I was putting it in the wrong URL. Um, But like, nobody checked that. I didn't check it. LinkedIn didn't check it. Um, So I made it so much more difficult than it had to be because I felt like innately, I was just like, oh, I know this. Like, I know so much about this. And I wasn't like double checking my work or rereading the documentation, things like that. So it is, it's so much easier than what I made it out to be. I will say that. So if you're finding it difficult, you're probably doing what I did and doing it wrong. And you're, you're D365 online though, not on-premise, right? Yeah, we're online. And now I know uh, connecting it to an on-prem org used to be challenging. Do either of you know if it still is? It has to be a different setup process still think that it's different? Well, because now for online, it just kind of shows up in the settings, right? Mm-hmm. Like you just go into the settings area and you can essentially turn it on from there. Um, 
I guess I assume for on-prem, and I, I haven't seen that in a while either, that it would be like a solution you'd have to put in and then a bunch of like probably API server to server keys you'd have to put in or something like that. That's the way I remember too, because I worked with an on prem environment. I think it was only, gosh, two, three years ago. My years blend together. Um, and we looked into getting the LinkedIn integration because we thought it would be really great to see like their information inside of um, the system. And I just remembered that that setup, like what it would entail and what we would actually get out of it kind of wasn't worth the work. I hate to say it like that, but sometimes you have to judge if it's going to be worth what you're putting in. Or worth the the LinkedIn license cost. Like I've I've talked to a lot of customers before where they love the idea of the functionality, but they're opposed if it's a smaller company or they have budget constraints, like they're opposed to that LinkedIn level like license. I think it's teams or enterprise that you need for in well, order for the integration to work. Yeah, for the integration to work, it's enterprise, but to get a lot of the sales navigator features, you have to have the relationship sales, which is even a step level up. Okay. So uh but the relationship sales license also gives you your dynamics sales license. Correct. So yeah. there, that's a bundled license and it's cheaper than buying both of them individually. Yep. But isn't like the standalone LinkedIn sales navigator like a hundred bucks a month or something? I actually yeah, don't even close. know. It's probably somewhere around there. So it's definitely cheaper to get the bundled one, the relationship sales, because it gives you access to both dynamics and it gives you access to the sales navigator features, which now includes the, the syncing of the data, which I can tell you has been like a huge game changer for our um, sales teams. Um, they love it. I believe that. I remember people when that was not available, constantly asking, but wait, like, can't I just find this person on LinkedIn and, and suck them into CRM? And at the time, like LinkedIn was making it sound like that was never going to be a thing. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's interesting that they've added that feature now. That'll yeah, and it's not just, yeah, and it's not just contacts either. Um, you still have to do them one by one because then, you know, salespeople are always like, oh, the next step of, oh, can I just take this whole list and sync it? Um, they, they actually do have to put some work and effort into syncing the contacts, um, which I think is good because it checks for duplicates and things like that, which is really awesome. Um, and, but I feel like, you know, like you had said, Merlin, that like, you know, LinkedIn made it sound like this was never going to happen, but they're both owned by Microsoft. So it's like, why was it so hard to get to this point? That's what I always wonder. Um, Cause it just seems so natural that the two systems would talk to each other in such a way. Um, but it's not just contacts that sync. You can actually sync like your notes, um, certain activities, like your in-mails, um, all of that, that can be synced over from sales navigator into dynamics as well. So if you're working out of that system, you're not going to lose any of that data. That's awesome. I know. Yeah. People are waiting for that for a long time. It was like, no, it doesn't do that yet, but it will someday. So I'm glad that someday is now. <laughs> yeah. I would say the integration, the update that they made last summer has just been, it now would feel like it's worth the money. Like, I don't want to say it wasn't worth the money before um, because there's so much that you can do inside of sales navigator. Um, I know this is obviously focused on the integration part, but I mean, I think that salespeople have to understand what the idea of social selling is just in general to be able to get the full benefits out of it. Um, but now it's it's totally worth like having both because you can you know integrate your content, your contacts, um, it all just syncs back and forth. So something that I, I saw online is that you can like have it sync, automatically update like the profile pictures, which I think there's always been a spot where you could put a picture in for a contact, but like who really maintained that? But if that could just auto sync from LinkedIn, like I could see how that would actually be useful. Are you guys using that, Ashley, at all? Or have yeah, you seen so that? We, yeah, so we have it turned on um, and we actually have it taken a step further. With this new integration, LinkedIn will actually sync to a field in Dynamics and tell you if that contact is no longer at the company that you have them identified at in Dynamics. So now there's a flag to say, hey, they're not at this company anymore. So you, it's a great way to help keep your data clean and move your contacts to the correct accounts or just deactivate them if they're no longer like a good contact for you. Um, we When we turned it on, I mean, now we have like thousands of those. So I think that like the setup of it is really hard to get to a point that's like easy to maintain. Um, but the whole theory behind it is awesome because we always want that data validation or, you know, way to keep our data clean. And here LinkedIn is what I would consider the best data source because people are updating it themselves. They're just handing it to you now in yep. the field. It's awesome. Yep. And that was, 
so back in the day, that's what made LinkedIn, like that was their official line for why you couldn't pull contact information across into Dynamics was that it's not LinkedIn's data, so they can't give it to you, right? Because your LinkedIn profile data is yours because you're maintaining it, you're updating it. So now it's, it's kind of a game changer to think about that, like data companies have been trying to chase this for years, right? You've got like your, you know, Dun & Bradstreet products and like all these other like competitive solutions that are trying to maintain lists of people like the inside view tool yes. is trying to figure out like well does this guy still work there or has she moved over here or you know where's this person and it was always a little bit like eh, it's maybe 60 70 percent accurate probably but i mean to your point linkedin is linkedin is the best source of data because that person is updating it themselves like that's but it's not always accurate some people do not update LinkedIn very quickly. I would say it's more accurate though than other data sources. Like it's still not a hundred percent, but it's way yeah. closer to hundred percent than anything else. Yes, I agree with that, but it's not a hundred percent. Yeah, no. nothing could ever be a hundred. Is inside no. view even a thing or around anymore? I feel like this has kind of completely replaced it. I mean, they're still around. Yeah, they're around, but I don't know if it's like, I remember when they went online, you know, there was like some sort of online where you could get inside view for free. They called it insights or something. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. That's, I don't even know if that's a thing anymore. Like it's no, so, no, yeah. it's been gone no. for a, around the time Microsoft acquired LinkedIn probably. <laughs> yeah. Probably, so yeah. to, to connect, like to get actually be able to sync the data, like do we, do you think LinkedIn actually changed like their terms and conditions then to be able to pull in profile data like that? They must have. Because I know that was a concern like initially and part of why it wasn't initially there. Yeah, I don't Makes know if that could be the case. That could be the case. Hmm. I feel like all those social platforms are changing their terms and conditions these days. So might be a I good mean, chance to go look at it. Yeah. <laughs> Who really reads I guess, that stuff? <laughs> I guess speaking of uh, data concerns. One of the things that I noticed uh, in my previous organization, we were trying to turn on uh, the synchronization between LinkedIn and Dynamics and corporate IT freaked out because when you go to turn it on, you get this little message that, you know, you're going to be sending all of this data that's inside your organization, like, I don't know, user names and emails and some other things like this, you're giving access to this external system, LinkedIn, to read all of your data. And corporate IT was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know, what's it doing? How much data is it taking? I, I don't know. And it was difficult to get concrete answers. So I don't know, Ashley, if you ran into similar issues or concerns out of your team or if yeah, it was just ask. like, fine. <laughs> um, I may ask for forgiveness, not a permission kind of person. Thankfully, um, the people I work for know that. Um, but now they'll also know that I didn't ask them if this was okay, um, if they're listening. <laughs> um, so I don't know if they've changed it because I wasn't approached on that. Like when I turned on, because we only had like a small part of this turned on before we turned on like the full integration. Um, but when you do the syncing, it's person by person now. So the person oh, okay. has to accept that like their information will be will be read and that kind of thing. So it could be down to like person and it, it, it actually LinkedIn respects your security rights as well. So like you won't see things that you don't like, cause we have super strict um, security. Like people can't open accounts that don't belong to them. Um, and so LinkedIn actually respects that because it is person by person. Nice. Okay. So that may even be improved then from when I went through this uh, 10 months ago. Yeah. Who knows? I, yeah, because this came out last summer, so that would have been after, like, I think it came out in July or August. Oh, that's great. What I also think is really cool is, like, on the lists, um, like, when you pull a list in LinkedIn Sales Navigator, like, you're always like, oh, I want to reach out to this company, or is this company available to go after? Um, now, with the integration, it'll actually tell you and have, a, like, a little CRM button next to that company name, and it tells you that they're already in your dynamic system, and then that is actually a hyperlink to the account inside of Dynamics. So you can just click on that CRM button next to the account name in Sales Navigator, and it opens up your Dynamics to that exact account record, and you can see who it's assigned to, if it's 
actually the same account, which I have not had any problems so far, by the way, of them not syncing to the correct accounts, which is shocking to say. Um, but I, I mean, that's huge too, because as these salespeople are, you know, prospecting, they can see, oh, this is already in dynamics. I, I don't need to focus on it as much. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Have you worked um, with like the connections piece or like the icebreakers piece? Like I'm always curious to know like how useful that is in real life. <laughs> I mean, I talk about it with salespeople. Um, that's not never one of the things that they're excited about. I hate to say it um, because for a lot of things, it doesn't show up. That's what I was wondering. <laughs> yeah. It's like one of those things that's great in theory, but. It looks good in a the demo. Yeah. Yeah, one of the things that they um, they replace is Point Drive inside of Sales oh, Navigator. Yeah. I'm not sure if you guys mm -hmm. knew what Point Drive was. Mm -hmm. It was a place to hold your documentation. They've replaced that now with Smart Links, um, which is what I would say. I think it's one step better. Uh, hopefully it is, right? You don't want to lose functionality. Um, but but what's really cool about it is you can upload files or even a website link. Like So if you have like a registration URL for a webinar or something like that, you can put that into Smart Links. And it tracks obviously who's looking at it. I think that that's really common knowledge um, that LinkedIn has this feature. But if that person views your document, that's going to be added as an activity to your Dynamics mm -hmm. record. So you could see in Dynamics that this person has opened your Smart Link, which Smart Link for how long. So you don't have to. So you can do things in Sales Navigator, but then you can see the result of it inside of Dynamics. That's really mm -hmm. awesome. That does so seem cool. more robust than Point Drive. Like I knew Point Drive would track kind of the analytics of views and, and stuff, but it, it definitely wasn't creating activities in Dynamics for you when I was working with it. Yeah, that's the new functionality that was released last summer. So it's, awesome. it's awesome because, I mean, it really just drives home like that full view for the, the salesperson and kind of, it's like that ROI, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I know that's not dollars, but like if you can see if people are actually opening up your files or clicking on a link and if they forward it to somebody else and they click on it, that, that's gold in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, no, this, uh, these are like all of the features that everybody has always been asking for. And historically, I've had to say, nope, sorry, nope, sorry. And I've always sort of wondered, like, what did Microsoft think the value proposition was for like that relationship sales license, right? Because I was like, I, I'm, as a dynamics person, I'm not out there selling the value of sales navigator, like telling people how they should be selling with social. So I never saw what the point was. And now it seems like finally there's a point. One, it's interesting because it's actually turned my role like into more of a sales. I don't want to say soul support, but I mean, I really have to understand because I, I manage our LinkedIn stuff as well. So I'm sure. also, you know, and I think that's just what happens to internal resources. You wear so many hats and um, which is cool because then you get to learn a lot of stuff. Um, and so I've become a sales trainer on social selling um, because it links into dynamics. Um, so I think it's changing the world, like just like, um, you know, dynamics admins, I think they're more power platform admins before or now. Merlin, I've heard you say that before. And I love that you said yep. that. It's something I'm definitely trying to pitch <laughs> to everybody <laughs> I talk to. Um, but, you know, it's, it's more than that now with all the things that LinkedIn or sync into dynamics like LinkedIn, um, your role just completely changes as an internal resource because sometimes you don't have many. It also opens up what you can become an expert in and like with a consultant. Yeah, it's true. So how do I boost my, uh, there's a score in there, the, the social there selling score. How do I make my score better, Ashley, since you're an expert in this now? Oh, I would not say I'm an expert. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I attend a lot of LinkedIn things. I, I've just recently taken it over at my company. So I'm attending like LinkedIn webinars to learn more about it. I'm so not an expert on the LinkedIn side, but if you want to sync those contacts into dynamics, I'm your first side. All right, excellent. Yeah. Do you guys see that this is something that a lot of people are interested in or does the price drive people away from him? I think it makes sense if you're in the right industry. Like I think there's a lot of sales organizations that don't, where LinkedIn isn't the right approach for sales, if that makes sense. And so it just doesn't, I don't see it adding value to every organization, um, but sales teams that do rely heavily on LinkedIn or, or social selling or, you know, networking like that, I think it does add value. So it's more about your industry and your sales approach versus 
if it's you know priced right or not i guess i think that makes sense i would assume that in like business applications selling so like realistically microsoft partners it should be a pretty strong value add or like it managed services or you know competitive salesforce oracle whatever um because i feel like that's that's the target audience you're going to find the most people on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if you're, I don't know, selling pool chemicals, I don't imagine that the LinkedIn is going to give you anything. And so you don't, you're not going to need the sales navigator. Yeah. I think I any think, B2C, it probably isn't as helpful or any industry where you have a really yeah. set kind of set prospect list. I think it's better for like infinite prospecting. Yeah. And I guess to your, to your actual question, Ashley, I have struggled to find customers who are interested in it, but I also haven't talked to many of them since this update. And so I feel like maybe that, that landscape could be shifted now. Yeah, because it was a because I mean we had the basic integration turned on where you can have like those boxes. I, I think they're just even web resources. I think they've changed it now. I'm going to call it a web resource, and it's totally better now. Um, it's just the wording I know. So, but when they, you know, when I reached out to my company and said, "Hey, like they've enhanced the integration. We're already paying for it. Like that enhanced integration. It's not like you had to pay more money." to get it. That was just one of the updates that they made. Um, and you got all that additional functionality for the same price. Um, so for me, that was like a, Hey, we're paying for this. We may as well turn it on and use it. Um, and I actually found somebody, um, close to me here in Wisconsin that had turned it on for their organization and just asked a million questions. Cause it, you know, like I said, it syncs data back and forth and you just, now you're messing with salespeople's data and they're prospecting and um we all know how salespeople can get so you definitely want to be careful with it and you know trial it with a few people first um but we've we found huge success in it so far that's great i assume then your users are excited about it too i hope so <laughs> everybody <laughs> i talk to yeah it's like a everybody's reaching out now with linkedin questions which you didn't hear much before um, so when we launched this, like people are just thrilled, um, and asking questions now. Um, and we've seen actually the usage of LinkedIn go up. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Now the yeah. real question will be, uh, does it impact like their, their sales? <laughs> like, yeah, do they sell and... more? Does it impact their win ratio or whatever? <laughs> and that's one of the cool things too, is that like when they create contacts, you can, um, identify a lead source for those contacts in the integration. Um, like when you're setting it up okay. between the two systems. So when you're in LinkedIn, when you're settings, you can create a lead source, obviously, and, you know, the maker portal and add, add all of that to the contact. And then it'll, you'll see it in LinkedIn. So all of the contacts that are created from LinkedIn will have its own unique lead source. So we'll know exactly how many contacts came from that. If those contacts have opportunities, um, things like that. So it's, it's actually pretty cool. You can kind of see that whole uh, sales cycle. I think it like it wouldn't even have to be the lead source and it could just be, you know, additional value during the sales cycle too and like help you close a deal that maybe you're already pursuing. So I could see it helping in that situation as well, probably. Yeah, that's a good point. Cause it, what if you already have that contact? So you don't right. need to create it, but you, with this additional functionality, we're able to sync, you know, see a pattern of, you know, actions or things like that. Mm-hmm. Right. Or you were able to use those icebreakers to really form a connection with that person. You know, you, you, it's so funny. We bring up those icebreakers, but you know, I train people on how to send in mails and like the icebreakers is actually really good for that because in mails are supposed to be personal, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's true. You can't like, I, I say the worst thing you can do is spend your Sunday evening copying and pasting like the same in mail to, you know, 50 different executives. Like spamming people. <laughs> exactly. and, and we all get in mail, right? So you know, which ones are, are spam and which ones are personal to you. And so those icebreakers could be really helpful for that. So I know we've been kind of joking about it, but finding what your commonalities are between somebody is the best way to reach out to them because um, LinkedIn, it isn't a warm touch and in mail is a cold touch. So, yeah. Well, and I think that's the point of the connections too. Like if you can ask someone to introduce you or say like, 
you know, I know you through so-and-so, or like we have this person as a shared contact, like even that probably helps them just a completely cold email. Yeah. And I don't know how new the team link is, but it actually shows you only people within your company hmm. that you're connected to, to these additional people. So then you can even reach out to like the president of your, cause I mean, think about executives, right. At your companies and how many, I mean, I know you guys are <laughs> not at companies like I am, but I think of like the presidents that work at the companies that I work at and they must have, I mean, just thousands of connections and the reach that they have. Um, imagine, them having a contact to somebody, are they going to tell you no, no salesperson, I'm not going to introduce you to this person that could become a lead. Like, of course they will. So that's huge as well. So team link is pretty awesome. It's true. I'm basically an executive, Ashley. So just think (laughs) of the influence and reach that I have. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Well, any closing thoughts? I would say just to people, it's, it's worth it. Um, if you have questions, like reach out into a community and find out if people are using, um, you know, the, the sales navigator integration, it's, it's huge for us. Um, but obviously it does take management, right? Like somebody does have to manage like how people are using it and training. So it is one more thing to take on. I would say it sounds very exciting. And I would agree with Ashley. It, it does sound like now it is probably worth the money. It does sound like that. I agree Finally. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll end it with that. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Dynamics Hot Dish podcast. For additional content and previous episodes, check out our website at dynamicshotdish.com. Follow us on Twitter at Dynamics Hot Dish and subscribe to our podcast for notifications. Thanks. See you next time.